welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're rounding decimals. Now there are two ways that you can round decimals. You've got your decimal places and your significant figures. This is the significant figures video. But you do need to know how to round to decimal places first before you can do this. So if you're not sure how to round to decimal places, go and watch that video and then come back to here. I'd like to explain why you want to round to significant figures. In practice, it's actually much more useful than decimal places. So I'll start with an example. Uh, usually when I say in practice, we're dealing with some kind of scientific context often when you have to round a number to a certain number of significant figures. So let's imagine you've got to measure the distance to the sun or something like that. So you set up your sun measuring equipment, you hit the big red button on the top, and on the display it pops out a number which it reckons is the distance to the sun. So we write it down. Uh, now broadly speaking, I did research this, it's about 150 billion meters to the sun. So I'll put a number down that's roughly that much. And let's say that your sun measuring equipment pops out some decimal places on the end of that as well. All right, so that supposedly is the distance to the sun. At least that's what your instrument says. Now you need to round this number. Now if you were to round this to decimal places, one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places, your line would be going somewhere around here and you'd be rounding the numbers here. However, all of this information is complete rubbish. Let me explain why. Imagine you're in your spaceship and you're flying towards the sun to work out when you've got to the edge of the sun. You're measuring the distance from where you are now to the edge of the sun, let's say. So you're flying through space, there's a few sun particles coming by, getting a bit closer to the sun, it's getting really hot now. Now there's quite a lot of sun particles and after a while you're surrounded by sun particles. You're in the sun. Well, at what point did you not were you not in the sun, to suddenly you are in the sun. It's made of gas. It's not like you can land on the sun or bounce off the edge or something. There's just lots of gas particles and after a while you're surrounded by a lot more of them and you could say you're kind of in the sun. But defining that edge is really difficult because it's so blurry. And certainly to the level of, well if we've measured this in meters then this is going to be the number of millimeters. So accurate to the nearest millimetres is just you're not actually going to be to measure the distance to the sun in millimetres because that edge is so blurry and the sun's not a perfect sphere anyway even if you were to measure the distance to the centre of the sun it changes its shape you get these solar flares it sticks bits out here and bits there it's just not an easy thing to measure the significant information in this number is not down here and rounding to decimal places you're just dealing with meaningless rubbish because they're so inaccurate here and it's changing constantly. The significant bit of the information is at the top end. In this case it's 149 billion. That's the interesting bit. <clears throat> and this stuff varies from day to day and second to second almost depending on what bit of the sun you're measuring towards. So with a lot of big numbers you'll find the interesting bit is at the top end not the bottom end. And when you want to round this number, because you don't want to have to be writing our numbers that big all the time, you want to round at the significant end, not the decimal places end. Let me give you another example. Imagine you wanted to measure the distance, I'll tell you what, how about the width of an atom? It's not going to be that big, it's going to be teeny tiny, yeah? atoms are really small. Everything just about in life is made of atoms. So they're like the building blocks of life. If we wanted to measure how wide an atom was, I mean you do get instruments that can measure that thing, but it's going to be really really small, okay? Now again I've looked this up, roughly speaking, an atom is going to be, uh, well you're obviously going to get a lot of zeros here. Again this is in meters, so it's 0.000000, not 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 and then we'll have some numbers. Let's imagine you measured some atom and it turned out to be that wide. Now again, if you were to round this number to a certain number of decimal places, <coughs> if you round it to two decimal places or three decimal places, well, that's going to be silly because you're going to throw away all of the significant information. Even if you round to eight or nine decimal places, you're still throwing away all the significant information. In this case, with a really small number, the significant information is not at the top end, it's at the bottom end. This is the bit where you'd want to do the rounding. 
So we need some mechanism which allows us to round, which will take account of the significant information, whether that's at the top end or at the bottom end. And the way we do that is with significant figures. Now, whereas with decimal places, they're defined after the decimal point, that's your first decimal place, second decimal place, third decimal place, same, same thing up here, first decimal place, second decimal place, etc. Significant figures are defined to be the first non-zero digit, and then everything, everything after that is significant. So on this big number here, the first significant figure is the one. That's the first digit that's not a zero. So that's the first significant figure. That's the second significant figure, the third significant figure, etc. Whereas on this number, you ignore leading zeros. It's the first non-zero digit. So you ignore all the zeros. That is the first significant figure. It's the first figure that's actually important, that's significant to us. So that's the first significant figure, the second significant figure, the third significant figure, etc. Now the way you round in practice is exactly the same as the way you round for decimal places. That bit's fairly easy. It's just working out where you start that can be the tricky bit. So remember, significant figures start with the first non-zero digit. For a big number, that's going to be the first digit. For a small number, just ignore the leading zeros. Let's do a few examples of how you round in practice, and then you should get the hang of it. So we'll try 0.0076429, and I'm going to round this number to two significant figures. So you ignore the leading zeros, that's your first significant figure, that's your second significant figure. So that's the point where we're going to round. You put your line there, you look at the next digit. It's less than five, so this digit stays the same. Now the answer, you need to keep all of these digits here. You throw away everything after the line, but you must keep everything before the line. So it's going to be 0 0.00076. Everything after the line gets thrown away. Again, you should always write the accuracy you've rounded to. In this case, we've rounded to 2SF, two significant figures. So that's how you do it. Uh, let's do another one. We'll have 0 0.00. 8529, and we're going to round this to one significant figure there. So ignore your leading zeros. 8 is the first significant digit, first significant figure, so you put your line there. You look at the next digit, it's 5 or more, so the 8 is going to go up. So keep the rest of it. It's going to be 0 0.09, because the 8, because of the 5, the 8 goes up to a 9. That would be one significant figure. All right, we'll do one more example of this type. So I'll have 0 0.01, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.592. And we're going to round this to two significant figures. Now I've kind of picked this one to try and catch you out here. Ignore leading zeros. The one is the first significant figure. But after that, everything is significant, even if it's a zero. So that's the second significant figure, third significant figure, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. These zeros here are zeros because when you measured whatever it was you were measuring, the width of an atom, the distance to the sun, these digits turned out to be zero from the measurement. They could have been a five or a nine, but they happen to be zero. These zeros, are, however, are different. These are zero because the number was too small to register on this scale. Yeah? Atoms are so small, you don't get any numbers here. These zeros just represent smallness. But any zeros that appear after the significant figures are actual measurements. They are the number it happened to be. So in this case, we're going to round to two significant figures. So that's your first significant figure. That's your second one. Line goes there. You look at the next one. It's less than five. It's a zero. So this stays the same. So the answer here is going to be 0.010. Two significant figures. Check. One, two significant figures, two significant figures. It's good practice to check that however many figures, significant figures you said you've rounded to is how many you've actually got. Yeah, two, two, one, one, two, two. You must keep that zero there, it's very important. Again, I talked about that a little bit more in the decimal places video. So that's how you round with significant figures when you're dealing with small numbers. So let me show you on this one here. Let's say we measured the width of our atom and it turned out to be this much. That's what the machine popped out and we want to round it to three significant figures, let's say. 
So you ignore all the leading zeros. That's the first significant figure. That's the second significant figure, third significant figure. So your line goes there. You look at the next one. It's five or more, which means this goes up. Nothing else will change. You throw away everything after the line, and you've got to keep all of that. You can't just write 173. 0.0001.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
because if your one significant figure would be the tens column, to the nearest ten, you're going to get 30, which makes sense if you think about it. All right, let's come on to our distance to the sun then. Let's round this to four significant figures. So that's the first significant figure. Second, third, fourth, your line is going to go there. Look at the next digit. It's a seven. Five or more means the three is going to go up. So the one stays the same, the four and the nine stay the same, the three goes up to a four, and then everything after the line up to the decimal point you fill out with zeros. So zero, 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 zero. Now you don't need to put zeros after the decimal point. You can if you want to, you can put point zero, 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 but they don't do anything. The only reason we need these zeros is to keep the place value. If you stick zeros after the decimal point, it's not going to affect the place value at all, so you just don't need to bother. Again, we keep these zeros here to keep the place value of these digits. So, to four significant figures, the distance to the sun is 1494000000. It's 149,400,000,000-ish meters. So that's how you round to significant figures. Just be careful with the big numbers. The main thing people get wrong with this is forgetting to put the zeros on the end after the line. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.